Good morning. I'm back. <laughs> How are you all this morning? I am praying that you are knowing that you are loved, valued, and appreciated. Amen. I, as many of you know, I was out last week. I was away in Houston um, taking care of some family emergency stuff. So, um, but I'm back today and um, refreshed and renewed and revived um, and was able to see the hand of God move in some miraculous ways. So I just want to say good morning to you. You are visiting Mountain Creek. I am Pastor Deborah Davis Bell. I am the pastor of Mountain Creek, and I am so glad that you're here uh, this morning to, to worship and to praise God. Um, there is a, I may, it just came to me, there is a, and I may have shared this before, uh, saying, in uh, South Africa, I believe is where it started, called Ubuntu. And that is U-B-U-N-T-U. -U. And it basically is, I am because we are. So because you and I are both here, we're one, we're together, we, that is our reason for existing. So I'm glad that you're here this morning. So um, I am looking forward to this season that we are entering. We're not quite at Easter. We are in a season of what some celebrate as Lent. And um, that's the season before the celebration of um, the uh, resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, um, but prior to that, there's some stuff that I want to share. So I'm going to go ahead and open us up in prayer, and then I'll share with you what I believe God has on my heart this morning. Gracious God, we humbly come to your throne of grace and thank you for one more opportunity to come to you in prayer. It is in you that we live, that we move, that we have our being. And we thank you, God, for you being the Lord and the God of our lives. In this time that we live in now, I, I can't even imagine not knowing you, Lord. Um, if we ever needed you, God, we need you now. And the beautiful thing about it is that you have been revealing yourself more and more and more to us, oh God, by your tender mercy and your grace. And we're so grateful for that. And we ask you today if you would continue to do that as I share your word, Lord, as I share what you would have for me to give to your people, please speak through me. Will you allow your anointing to fall fresh? Use me for the upbuilding of your kingdom and for your glory. And God, may each and every one who is under the sound of my voice, who is attentive and here at this service, may they receive everything that you have for them and not just for them, but for their loved ones and for those you would have them interact with throughout this coming week. We ask that you would touch and heal those who are sick and shut in. We ask that you would uh, move in the lives of our relatives, our family members and our loved ones, Lord, who are going through difficult times. We ask for your protection, for your guidance, for your wisdom, and for your love to prevail and be felt amongst us all. We pray all of this in the mighty matchless name of Jesus Christ. You are our Lord and our Savior. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So um, as I was preparing for what God would have for me to share uh, today, I was thinking about the um, Jesus Christ and all of the interaction that he had with the the various people that he he interacted with while he was here on earth and there are several um circumstances and situations and and um and times where he was with 
individuals, either one-on-one -on -one or in crowds. Um, uh, many times he was giving teaching moments to his disciples. And so there is a lot that Jesus did while he was on, on earth. And then had the very, very nerve, uh, praise be his name, to allow himself to be stretched out on a cross and, and die and be crucified that we would all live. Um, but before he did that, um, there were different encounters that he had. And so as we enter this uh, pre-season to Easter, um, I want to share a specific story with you uh, today. And um, it basically um, highlights some of the interaction that he had and then how um, I think about this particular story and then the many, many more that um, took place as Jesus went about and how even to the point of being stretched out on the cross, he was still ministering to and giving love and hope while he was on the cross to the guy who was next to him when he told him that, um, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. That's the kind of Jesus that we serve. And he still loves us. He still sits at the right hand of the Father and makes intersect, intersection for us. Amen. So today we will talk about how despite tradition, culture, protocols, procedures, how G Jesus broke through all of that in order to minister to a woman, a Samaritan woman at a well. And the reason why this story is, is so important is that Jesus was a Jew and this woman was a Samaritan and the Samaritans and the Jews didn't have anything to do with one another. Um, two different races of people. And there's even a passage of scripture that refers to um, the Samaritans, a Samaritan as, as a dog <laughs> or in reference to a dog. And so as I share this with you, I want you to hear the word of God. Um, this particular reading is gonna, I'm gonna pretty much focus on, on this story today. And as I read it, I want you to um, be patient and read along with me. I'm gonna read the New International Version, um, but we're gonna start at John 4 and we're going to, um, let's see, let's read John 4, one through 27. Okay, all right. So let's read. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria, Samaria called Sychar near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there and Jesus tired as he was from the journey sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with the Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. 
The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you have had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah is coming, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one to you, I am he. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or why are you talking with her? Woo, a lot going on here. If I were to give my sermon today a title, I would title it Centered on Living Water. That's Centered on Living Water. You see, in this particular passage of scripture, you can see that there was, there was a lot taking place. We had uh, Jesus who was getting water. He was tired. Um, he had, I'm sure, been out uh, walking and, and ministering and doing all that he was called to do in his calling. It was noon, 12, probably hot, and it, right in the, the middle of the day. And from what I understand, usually people who would come to draw water would come at like dusk or come at a time when, um, you know, the sun was going down so that it wasn't so hot. They can get the water, whatever they needed for their supply. Um, but usually not right in the middle of the day. And this particular woman was there. Um, and there were probably a number of reasons why she was there that first of all, um, she probably was considered an outcast in society. Um, she clearly had had her way with men. And you know how we tend to focus on the woman. It's like, you know, sometimes at least um, in some cultures, it's okay for the man to have a whole plethora of women but you know for a woman it's just shameful especially back in those days and so um she probably was just making her time to get that water when everybody else wouldn't be sitting around the well or coming to draw water and make her the talk of the town so we we also see that the jews and the samaritans did not associate with one another i ask you the question who don't you associate with? Is there somebody in your life you don't associate with? And why? Jesus clearly reveals his identity to her. He what? He says he is the gift of God. He is living water. That she will never thirst again. That he is a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Now he's, can you imagine? You just going about your day and someone comes up and tells you all this stuff at once. And I have to be honest, I don't know if I would be in the state of mind to believe them. I believe God would probably have to have my heart prepped to hear all of this, right? To believe it. And then he's prophesies to her or he gives her a word of knowledge and reveals that what he knows about her. Are you open? To prophecy today in your life? I ask you that question. 
Are you open to hear a word of knowledge today in your life? Is there something that God wants to say directly to you through someone else? Open your heart, open your ears, open your mind to hear what thus saith the Lord. He reveals what true worship is and the invitation for all who will to come and worship God in what? In spirit and in truth. He's laying all this down for her. He's giving her a lesson. He ultimately reveals that he is the Messiah, the one she's been looking for. Woo! Are you looking for someone today? Are you searching? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you're longing and if you're searching in this hour, know that Jesus Christ is the one you're looking for. Jesus' example was a witness to his disciples and to others. You see, Jesus loves the outcast. Hallelujah. He loves the one who has been divorced. Hallelujah. This woman was living with a man she wasn't married to. He loves the ones who are living in sin as they call it. He loves the rejected and he loves the judged. Now you might say, well, well Pastor Deborah, you telling me that he loves people who are quote unquote, behaving this way or living this way. Yeah, he loves them. You see, Jesus doesn't love the sin, but he loves the sinner. Hallelujah. It is not too late to know him and to turn to him. And if you already know him, receive what he wants to say to you today through this message, which is, do you love the outcast? Is there someone you're rejecting? Amen. Can you love in spite of rejection? Can you love in spite of the judgments? Let's go on. So as the story continues in John 4, 28 through 42, it says, then leaving her jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and finish his work. Don't you have a saying? It's still four months until harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now, the one who reaps a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus saith the Lord. Thus the same one sows and another one is reap, is reap, reaps is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because the woman's testimony he told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the savior of the world. Hallelujah. Just from an encounter at a well, meeting a woman at a well, all of this took place. I think about when the Lord began to move in my life a couple months back and he said to me, bigger and greater and open your mouth. That was the word he gave me. 
And I knew then that God was telling me to stretch myself, to grow, to maybe get allow myself to be in some of those uncomfortable places so that I could do the will of the Father and to open my mouth at the, at the times when I may be fearful so that he can operate and do what he wants to do through me. You see, the woman was so excited, she left her jar. She left the whole reason that she came for. Why? Because she realized that not only did she need this water to drink for sustenance, she had encountered, encountered living water. Hallelujah. And she went back to her village, left the jar, went back to her, her village. And at that moment, when Jesus spoke to her and ministered to her, her mind was changed. You see, it can happen on a dime. I've witnessed it. Someone that I know who's very near and dear to my heart, who had been struggling majorly, said, I want Jesus in my life. And since that happened, has turned on a dime and is living a much better life one day at a time. God is faithful. So she was enthusiastic about it. She was enthusiastic about sharing the gospel. You see, Jesus explains how he is fed to his disciples. He says he's fed by doing the will of the Father. When, were, when was the last time you were enthusiastic about sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ? Do you remember when you first gave your life to Christ? I remember when I gave him to mine. I was so happy to tell people about Jesus. It was such a revelation and there was so much truth into what I could understand and see that I had no shame and no pretense on sharing his gospel. I was enthusiastic about it. To participate in the divine mission of giving people eternal life. Woo! That's what you and I get to do. We get to participate in that mission. He invites at his, Jesus invited his disciples to do the same and he invites you to do the same today. You can participate in it. In it. You are invited to eat at the table. And what is that table? That table, that food, that food is to share the gospel. That's how you eat. And then Jesus, the Messiah, has impacted this village so much to the point where they say, come and stay with us. Come stay with us. And he stayed for two days. And I don't know about you all, but I know for me, just that whole concept of going and staying with somebody for a couple of days and coming out of my comfort zone, right? I can't, it, Jesus didn't, I couldn't even see him having a particular comfort zone because he was always on the mission field. He was always at work. And then I think about myself and it's kind of like, hmm, I just got back um, from Houston from doing some serious missionary work. And it was intense and it was grueling. And I thought many, many days, uh, it'd be nice when I get ready, when I can go home and get in my, my own bed and be in my own space. It's my comfort zone. But I also recognized that God was calling me for such a time as this to step out of my comfort zone and to allow myself to be used for the gospel. That's what he's calling all of us to do. When he speaks, will you listen? Will you be enthusiastic about sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ? Ultimately, as a result of Jesus allowing himself, he stayed a couple days. There were no big eyes or little U's. He was on the same page with everybody else, even though I'm sure they were looking at him like, wow, this is God almighty. He made himself common with the common people and the whole village or the majority of the village. It says ultimately many more in the village became believers, not only because of what the Samaritans said, but because they were able to see it for themselves. When you allow yourself to be in the presence of folks and 
um, before you start spouting out, you know, salvation and, and what they need by just spending time with people and getting to know them is often the greatest witness that you could, you could give. You could, the person you can be is a witness by spending time. So I have some questions for you to consider today. First of all, um, who don't you associate with and why? I asked that earlier. Who don't you associate with and why don't you? Number two, are you open to hear prophecy about what God has in store for you? I've heard that a lot of people are really uncomfortable with, with prophecy and word of knowledge. And I don't know if that's true. One thing I can tell you about prophecy that if it's the truth, you know it. Like there's no question in your mind because God will confirm something that you already know. He'll just put confirmation on it and then often give instruction as a result. Are you open for that? Three, when were you last enthusiastic about sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ? When, when was that? Tell, let's talk about it. Tell somebody. What happened? What was going on in your life then? And then will you allow yourself to come out of your comfort zone to stay in places with folks who are hungry for Jesus? Will you stay in places with people, whatever that looks like, a, a visit, a phone call, um, a Zoom meeting? We have all kinds of ways. It's amazing. They say we live in a time where we have the most um, there are many, many different ways of interacting with one another, yet this seems to be a season of a lot of loneliness. So that means we're not really taking time with one another. Are you willing to come and spend a few hours with someone just to sit, talk with them, look at them, let them know you see them? And then how will you help others see Jesus for themselves? What are some ways you can do that? Think about it. Amen. Um, I'm gonna switch gears here and talk about our call to action. We have a call to action this week. And this week, what we're gonna do is I want you to make a phone call with someone between now and when we meet again. And I want you to invite them to come to church with you. That means when you're coming to church here on Sunday, invite them to come. So invite them to come, tune in through Zoom. It could be that um, you could invite them to your home and, and sit and have service with them. You could do that. There's a way to do that and have the distancing um, but invite them to come next Sunday, right? So you want to get on it right away. So you give them enough notice because this will be Sunday that they're to come to have service with you. Invite them, give them the information. And then next Sunday, we'd like for you to let us know that you invited your guests. Just post, I did it, whatever. If you say I did it, we'll know what you did. And then I want you to take it a step further. I want you to um, ask your guests if they come, if it's okay to get their con contact information and have the pastor reach out just to say hello to them. Um, so they may have a prayer request, they may not. We don't have to get real deep, but just say she just wants to um, you know, say hi to you and, um, and thank you for visiting, for coming. So. That will be whoever comes, get their information, invite them to come, um, to, to give me their information, okay? So that's what we have for this week. I'm gonna go ahead and go into our announcements. Um, we, first of all, want you to go to the website. If you have any questions about anything, go to mountaincreek.org, okay? Go to the website. When you get there, submit your prayer requests. Yes, submit your prayer requests. Prayer changes things. 
I have seen so many um, things that have happened as a result of us praying. We are a praying congregation and it's a blessing because um, God answers prayer and he calls us to pray. So submit your prayer requests. If they're confidential, I'll be the one to pray for you. Okay, happy to do that. Just me. All right, and then um, sh this new uh, Easter series begins. Hallelujah. So Easter is, is coming um, the uh, April 4th, the 11th, the 18th, the 25th, 25th. I am going to have um, this series, this Easter series, and I'm going to share with you how love reigns. Hallelujah. And during that time, I will give you um, every week after you will get a set of like questions. It won't be a whole lot lengthy, but just some questions regarding uh, what we're talking about when love reigns. And it'll be similar to what we did last Easter. Th this Easter, we won't have um, a booklet or anything, but we will. I will have the questions for you that I'll ask and just need you to consider them and process them and meditate on them. Um, so, and it'll be different than the questions for going deeper. So just know love reigns, we'll focus on that. So get ready, that comes starts in April, all right? Good Friday service is at 6.30 p.m. And so um, get ready to attend that on April 2nd. Woo woo, praise God. Um, so hopefully you will, you will join us, we'll be Facebook Live, okay? April 2nd, Good Friday, 6.30. And then um, start, pray, start thinking of, and praying about um, who you can invite, all right? Think about that. Who's in your sphere of influence um, that might be struggling, might be lonely, might be feeling hopeless, wanting a connection, um, asking questions about life. Pray, be courageous and invite them to church for the Love Rain series starting on Easter, okay? Yeah, think about that. Get ready to invite. This is an inviting season. <laughs> and then we have our Going Deeper, all right? Going Deeper um, at 11.15 on Sundays. Uh, will you please um, join us? 11.15, we go over the questions that I posed. Um, there may be other questions you might have comments. Um, yeah, just prepare to, to go deeper, say post, send me link, and we will send you the link on how to join the Going Deeper group. Amen. All right. Well, um, I hope that you receive whatever it was that God has had for you today. May you enjoy the rest of your week. And don't forget to pray and to to submit prayer requests and to just, you know, let's interact. Let's let's get our, our prayer juices flowing and our asking people to church flowing. And we are the church, we are the body. So I pray God's blessings upon you. May he bless you, may God keep you, may God make his face shine upon you, may his countenance be upon you. May you have favor and may you receive peace. In Jesus' name, go and be blessed. Amen. All right. See you next week, if not before. All right. Have a good one.